Hi everyone, welcome to GoCert, please do not forget to subscribe and like this video if you find it helpful. I will guide you through some of the very basics, just to be able to edit your photos and significantly improve their quality. Before everything, you have to download the files through the link in the description or download similar ones from sites like unsplash.com or even better use your own from social media for example. So, let's get started. Assuming you already have downloaded the files. Open Photoshop. Go to File and then Open. Search for the files you downloaded and choose the image with 01 in front of it and press the Load button. Look for the layers on the right panel where you can see one layer, the image we just loaded. By default, when we open a JPEG file it gets the name background and is locked. Now either press the right mouse button on the name of the image and choose Duplicate or just press Ctrl and J and rename it to Image Auto Tone. We have two layers. Great, let's move forward and select the new layer we just created. Go to the upper menu and find Image and then choose Auto Tone or alternatively just press Shift Ctrl and L. Voila, congrats you just made a pretty cool adjustment. We use this as a quick fix, a pretty cool feature that comes really handy most of the time. Now that we have got ourselves two layers let's take a closer look. On the left side of the image, we can see an eye that practically hides and unhides the image, let's click on it on either image and see the difference. Notice that when we hide the top image then we can see the beneath of it. That is because the layers have a hierarchy, from top to bottom in terms of visibility. Let's move forward and examine the rest of the similar features. Duplicate our original layer again, maybe this time to use the shortcut in order to get familiar with it, Ctrl and J. Rename it as Image-Auto Contrast. As you most probably guess, navigate again to the upper menu and choose Image, and then Auto Contrast or just use its shortcut Alt-Shift-Ctrl-L. Hide and unhide accordingly the layers to see the differences. Okay now, the next step is for you now. So, pause the video and repeat the steps, but this time choose the auto color option. I am sure everything went smoothly but, in any case, let me guide you through the steps. Now that we have done the same for all the options you might be wondering which one is the best or even if a combination of them. Well, everything depends on the image. You will find three more images to practice and I am sure that you will get more familiar while working on them. You can even practice with images you have already uploaded to social images like Facebook and Instagram and see the differences. Before move forward, since we started with layers, let's see some of the basics of them. We can drag and drop them like this. Notice the double blue line? It indicates that the layers we are dragging will be put there. Another important feature which will help as well to organize much better our work is grouping them. Choose with the control key it's one of the images we have created and press control and G in order to group them. You can rename the group just like you renamed the names of the images. You can rename it for example image auto features so you can come back and turn on off the auto feature that suits you for the particular work. This is a must of practice and I strongly advise you to consider using it in most of your works. When we are pretty sure that there is no need to turn on off the features we can just merge all the images into one. This can be done similarly by choosing the layers, right mouse click on them, and choose from the menu Merge Layers. Be aware though that you now have one image and therefore you cannot make any changes to one of them. To revert this step just press Ctrl and Z. Next, we have to save our work by navigating to the upper menu, then File and then Save. You notice that we can only save it in PSD format and that's because we now have a more complicated image with layers. On the other hand, once you have saved the work so far, let's see how we can export it. First of all, choose the final image while you hide and unhide the images and once you have the output that you most like to export, navigate to the upper menu choose file and then quick export as PNG. If you want to export it in different formats, like JPEG or SVG then you have to choose the export as option. 
Each one of the options has its own properties. Let's start with combining some images together into an image. Load all the images from the 02 folder. You can see all of them by guiding through the tabs. Now go to 02A and hold down the left mouse button and drag it to 02 image. While you are holding the left mouse button you can align it into the image as you wish. Resize the image as you wish. If you accidentally deselect it, you can select it again with Ctrl and T. Holding down the shift key while resizing will result in a non-proportional resizing. In case the image you are dragging is too big or too small then you might want to zoom in or zoom out. The best way to do so is by holding down the control key and plus or for zoom in or out respectively. If the image is out of your field of view, then by holding the space button you can drag it with your left mouse button or change the view percentage at the lower left corner like this. By default, the auto alignment is on if it is not in your case, then go to the upper menu, view, show, and choose smart guides. Now repeat the same for the rest of the images.
When you fit in the images you want, then we are ready for a very important step, the levels. A must of touch in order to get even more good looking images. So, let's get started. Go to the upper menu, Windows, and check if there is a tick on the left of the adjustments, if not left click on it in order to enable it. OK, let's move forward on the right panel, find the Adjustments tab and while hovering through the icons we will find the Levels icon, left click on it. There are three pins, one at the very left, one at the center, and one at the very right. The first one is correcting the black balance while the right one is the white. Most of the time moving the pin right at the moment that the graph is dramatically changing will have the ultimate effect. The same counts for the right pin as well. In regards to the pin at the center, just move it in both directions till you get the best results. Most of the time there is no need to move it though or you just move it a little bit. We can see the difference between the original image by turning on off the visibility of the adjustment layer. Play around with the blending options and find which one fits best for blending the images. You will realize that for the particular image the light and blending option is the best. Adjust the opacity as well. In addition to the adjustments, let and oppos, s take a look at vibrance. Hover again with your mouse at the adjustment icons till you find vibrance. There are only two options slash slides, just play around with them till you get the most out of this feature. Most of the time you will slide to the right a lot and just a little bit to the same direction the saturation, but again, everything depends on the image and results you want to get. Next is another great adjustment that can actually significantly improve your image, and this is Hue Adjustments. Load the image starting with 03. Again, hover at the adjustment icons till you find the hue and left click at it. At the panel that shows up, you can first try and test the presets and see the differences. 
Now let's get started, under presets is an option which by default is selected master meaning the changes are for all the colors. Let's test this a little bit and see the results. Go ahead now and check the options. You can choose different colors and therefore make changes for the particular ones. For example, for the loaded image, we can see that the grass is more like yellow than green so let's fresh this color up. Choose at first green and slide to test it. We can't see many differences and that's because actually, the grass is more like yellow. So, choose yellow and make some changes. Viola, we now have some fresh grass. The image is totally different now. Let's create a postcard and put some text into it in order to get familiar. First, we have to choose the right dimensions. From the upper menu choose File then New. Find Art and AMP, Illustration from the list of the tabs. Choose the postcard and on the right panel choose Landscape Orientation. Notice that the best practice is this way, choose the dimensions and then load the image. From the file menu, choose place embedded and load an image to work with. I choose an image of a beach from Island Crete. Choose the text tool and left-click on the image to start typing. Notice that a predefined text is shown in order to see the font, dimensions, and etc. We can change these settings either on the right panel or just below the upper menu. Let's navigate into some of these settings. Change the color accordingly to your image by choosing a hue and then left-click on the palette to choose the right text color. Change the font by dragging next to the font dimension or by just writing the number. Choose a font to work with, notice that I have selected the text I want to change first. Into the new tab, there are a lot of options to work with like line and letter spacing. Turn all the text into capital letters and many more.
Let's create another text layer. Choose the text tool but this time instead of just left click, left click and drag in order to create a text box. You can enter random text by choosing from the upper menu and type the lower mipsum option. Next, we are going to create some text into a particular path in our postcard. From the left panel find the pen tool and left click and hold for a while till a menu is shown. Choose the freeform pen tool from the menu, then make sure that the option path bellows the upper menu is chosen. Start drawing the path like this and adjust it to fit as you wish. Notice that there is no layer created for the path we just created. This is because paths are located elsewhere. You have to navigate through the tabs above the layers and find paths. There you go, this will be the list of our paths. Now, choose the text tool and navigate through the path. Notice that the cursor is changing while hovering right on it. When this happens and left click, we can start typing on the path. Using the pen and path tools is much more complicating and mastering them will give you an important advantage. By holding down the left mouse button on the text you can move it by dragging it to the left or right or even flip it underneath. You can also press the control key when the text on the path is selected and move the little circle dot at the end of the text on the line. This will define the end of the visible text. The same goes for the first dot as well, it will define the beginning, careful though this can cause the text to stretch or the opposite.
The dot at the center will just move the text left or right. So, let us practice what we have learned so far. We are going to use the adjustments to make some fancy changes. Okay, I think that there is a significant improvement in the image. Let's start with some cropping. Left-click on the Crop tool at the left panel. Notice when we select it, below the upper menu new parameters appeared. For cropping, we will use most probably the pull-down option with W and H resolution. Remember that this image was bigger than the postcard dimensions? For practice purposes let's crop it to see the differences. Try some different cropping and then revert it with Ctrl and Z. Notice that if we hover the cursor outside the image, like this, we can drag and play. This gives us some additional options. Go ahead make and practice with me by using the different parameters.
It's time now to show you a very handy feature that will save you a lot of time in particular cases. Say that you have to crop the image but you will leave empty spaces on the left and right sides. This can be happened by checking the option Content Aware. Be aware though, sometimes you might need some touching as well. Next, we are going to copy-paste and merge some images together. So, let's move forward. Load the number 6 images from your downloaded files. Create a new one with 1000 by 1000 dimension. Remember that this is the best practice, first we create the desired empty image and then work on it. Now we are going to use the marquee tool. By holding down the shift key, we will maintain the proportions. When we finish, we have to drag and drop it to our empty one. Using the transform fit the image. This time select the elliptical marquee tool and again holding down the shift in order to maintain the proportions. Fit it in the cup. After finishing you just choose the best blending option that fits nicely.
Next, we are going to do some clipping. Please load image 7 from your downloaded files. Type the letter A and make it really big. Make sure the wooden board layer is above the text layer and have selected the board layer. Go to the upper menu, choose layer and then choose create clipping mask or alternative hit ctrl alt and g. You can see now the results. While the move tool is selected you can move the board's image till you are satisfied with the results. You can also scale it by transforming it with ctrl and t. We can do the same with the text layer but remember you have to select it first. If you have both the layers selected, you can move them around and test different options. Since we do not have a background, create a new layer and fill it with white. Now we can play around with some blending options. Enjoy!
We are going to use masking with the Select and Mask option. Please load the images starting with 8. This would be a girl and a nice background with a sunset. We would like to the two of them like this. We want to receive a similar result to this image. Remember though, the more you work on the image the better the results. I am going to do some basic touches but you have to work a little bit harder to get better results. So, let's get started. Start with the image with the girl. Use the quick selection tool to mark our mask which will move afterwards to the sunset image. Unselect with the minus selection tool as well wherever is necessary.
When you are ready drag the image into the sunset image. Use cropping to fit them together. Make some final touches. Apply some adjustments. Congratulations, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. We tried to make this video as short as possible in order to be a starting point for those who are interested in beginning learning Photoshop.